Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning sermon. I'm Dean Anderson from the St. Albert Church of Christ. Uh, we are going to take a scripture reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to read verses 16 to 18. So it's three verses, but it's actually very short. It's got one of the shortest verses in the whole Bible in this passage. So the scripture reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. It says, Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's a very simple, straightforward verse. Uh, it gives some very good instruction for how we as Christians should be living our lives. And that gives us our next word of the week. Uh, this word of the week that we're looking at today is thankfulness. So in this passage in verse 18, it says, give thanks in all circumstances. So that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. Uh, I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. Uh, this is that time of year where a lot of people make resolutions. So they, uh, I don't know, maybe you look at something that you want to change in your life, some sort of habit that you want to do differently, maybe a habit that you want to stop and maybe you replace with something else. So people resolve to make a change. Uh, it's kind of a nice even number or date to start on for that change. Uh, I'm not a big believer in resolutions of the sense that they happen to have, they have to happen on January 1st. I think you should do these changes whenever they suit you best. Uh, but to a lot of people, this works out uh, well for them to, to do it on January 1st. So hopefully you're successful in whatever resolutions you make. But one thing we're going to look at today with this idea of thankfulness, we're going to instead uh, of looking things to change in the future, uh, is to look back, look back on our year and see what we are thankful for. Uh, maybe it is one of your resolutions to be more thankful in the future. Uh, look at the past year and do this for yourself uh, as you're watching this morning. Look at your past year and look for some things that you have been thankful for. Uh, it might be tough to do. Uh, it's kind of a challenging year and challenging last two years that we've been having with uh, COVID and all the restrictions and uh, a lot of people's home lives and job lives have been kind of, you know, mixed around, a lot of turmoil in those times. Uh, some people are doing really well with the changes, some people are doing not so well. So it might actually be a challenge for you to look for things in the past year that you're thankful for. Uh, maybe you're like me. Uh, I'm somebody who tends to get kind of the Christmas blues. The Christmas time is kind of one of my lowest points of the year. I'm not really sure why. Uh, I think sometimes I have a hard time uh, looking for things to be thankful for when I'm feeling low, when I know that there's so much to be thankful for, but I still don't feel it. And you can almost start to get a guilt feeling because of that. Uh, and it tends to put you in a bit of a spiral uh, where you start feeling guilty because you don't feel thankful because you know you should be thankful, but you still feel guilty for not being thankful and you just start building on itself. So it's one of those things. Uh, we, as Christians, are to be thankful. We're to give thanks in all circumstances. Uh, it's a key when it says all circumstances, because sometimes we might only have a tendency to feel thankful when things are going well, but if you're struggling with COVID over the last couple of years, it's just been something that's been dragging on and on. Maybe you're going through the Christmas blues. Winter blues is one thing that was mentioned in our worship service this morning. Um, we have to be thankful in those circumstances too when we're not feeling so good. So, uh, I'm going to be talking on this lesson about thankfulness and seeing what the scriptures say about it. And I'm really going to be talking to myself because like I say, I'm in this period where I'm a bit low, so I want to get myself out of it as well. And one way to do that is to really focus on being thankful for the things that you've been blessed with. Um, when I look back on my year, uh, even over the last week, I have something to be thankful for. The one thing that I was really thankful for is that I do have a job where I was able to take this week off between Christmas Day and New Year's. I know a lot of people don't have that ability. Uh, but I was blessed to be able to do that. Uh, during uh, this time of year for us this year in particular, it's been very cold outside, but I was still able to have good enough health and have the ability to actually go out and ride my bike every day. So I still got out in the minus 35 degree weather to go ride my bike for a couple hours every day. And I felt very comfortable doing that. So I was very thankful for the ability to do that. So that's one thing that I did. I tried to look back and see what I'm thankful for. And most of all, no matter how down you may feel or what kind of struggles you've been going with or going through, us as Christians can always be thankful for that gift of salvation. Uh, in our scripture reading, uh, where it says in verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances. Uh, the New King James Version uh, phrases it where it says, in everything give thanks. So no matter the situation you're in, you can always be thankful for something. And even when things are really, really tough, 
as a Christian, we can always go to that, that fact that we have that inheritance in heaven with him. We have that gift of salvation. Um, it's something that we can always fall back on. If you go to Romans 3, we're going to look at kind of the thing that Christians should always be thankful for. We're going to look at this in a little bit more detail, this whole idea of being thankful for salvation. Again, when you're going through a low time, if you happen to be in that position, when you're giving thanks in all circumstances, when things are low, this is something you can always go back on. And if, it, if you have to kind of run through this in your mind just to understand what you're thankful for, it's, it's important to do so. Uh, Romans 3 and verse 23. Uh, this is a verse that shows people's state with respect to God. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is a fact. We have all missed the mark in some way. Uh, sinning is means missing the mark. You think about it in archery terms, or you're trying to shoot an arrow on a target, and you miss that target even by a little bit, you've missed the mark. And that's what's happened with us as people. Uh, God has a standard, uh, and if we make one mistake, we've missed the mark. And we're all in that position. We're all sinners. No one is perfect. So there's some unfortunate news that goes along with this, kind of the bad news first. Without Christ, everyone is separated from God. Uh, it's not the greatest news, but it's a fact. It's something that we do have to accept. But the good news is, with Christ, you can be together with God again. God has given us a method that we can have that reconciliation with God again. We can have that, um, when we fall short of the glory of God, we can regain that again through Christ. If you go to Ephesians chapter 2, this is a passage that shows us how we can get this. And how we do get this as Christians. Uh, Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not as a result of works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. When we make that decision to put Jesus on as our Lord, we can go to heaven, and we will have salvation. It's something that's given to us. It's with Christ's help, and we have been saved by grace through that. And the one thing that I find interesting here, we are at the holiday season, too, where there's lots of gift giving during Christmas time. It says in verse, uh, verse 8, it says, It is the gift of God. It is something he has given to us. There's no way we can earn this. No way that we can work our way into heaven. Because when you miss the mark once, you've missed it. It's done. The thing's fixed. And... It's only through Christ and through grace that we can gain that gift of salvation back, and it's a gift from God when we get this. But there's one thing that has to happen, is we have to accept that gift. Uh, there's a lot of people in the world that do not want to accept this gift, and that's the state that they choose to stay in, which again is very unfortunate. But to gain the benefit of gift, if you get a gift at Christmas time, you know, you have to pick up the gift, you have to open the gift, you have to accept the gift. And it's the same thing with Christianity. Jesus and God has offered this gift of salvation to everyone on the earth. And you just have to accept it. You have to grab it. You have to open it. You have to accept this gift of salvation. And anybody can do that. It's something that we just have to choose to do. So when we do that, and we have this gift of salvation, that is something we can always be thankful for. Uh, we need to be thankful because it's something that God wants us to do. He says again in our, our scripture reading, he says, be thankful, give thanks in all circumstances. And this idea of ingratitude, uh, being ungrateful for what you have been blessed with, does not please God. Again, kind of a harsh truth in a sense. I think we all go through lows and, and periods in our lives where we don't feel very thankful for what we have, and I think that's something that's natural. But hopefully we can look in Scripture how we can get through those times, and we can uh, kind of overcome that attitude of ingratitude that we may have. Uh, if you think of the idea of being a gift giver, God has given us that gift of salvation. We could probably understand why this idea of ingratitude does not please him. It doesn't make him happy. Uh, again, you give a gift to somebody at Christmas time, and they take that gift, and they say, I don't want this, and they just kind of throw it away. How would that make you feel? It would make you feel very good. And that's something that happens to God a lot. There's a lot of people that are very ungrateful what, for what he has provided to everybody on this earth. Uh, they're essentially saying, ah, I don't want that. And they just kind of push it off to the side and they're not very thankful for it. Or if you do accept the gift of salvation, but you're not showing that gratitude in your life. Again, that's not going to make him feel very good. It's going to displease him in a certain sense. You go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 
I want to show in this passage how ingratitude is a quality that he does not want to see in his children. He does not want Christians to have an attitude of ingratitude. And this passage in 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're going to look at verses 1 to 5, it categorizes this ungratefulness quality in with some other things that are pretty pretty harsh, some things that we definitely want to, or we definitely understand should not be a part of our lives. But putting ungrateful in that list kind of shows the severity of this attitude of ungratefulness. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, we'll start in verse 1. It says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. So we have this in verse 2. Ungrateful is listed right in the middle of all of these other qualities that I think most of us would agree upon are undesirable qualities. Um, we can see the company that being ungrateful is associated with in this passage. Being boastful, being proud, unholy, conceited, abusive, and so on. There's so many qualities in here that we would probably agree are very serious, but sometimes I think we think of ungratefulness as being a quality that's undesirable, but it's not a sin. It's not something that we're really doing that we should try to stop. It's just, well, I just feel that way. It is something that we can change, and we should change, and God wants us to change, just like other sins in our lives. It's an attitude that a follower of Christ should not have. You go to Colossians. We're going to look at a few different passages in Colossians to show how we should have this attitude of gratitude in our lives. Thankfulness is something that should really uh, be a part of our lives so that we can look at our passage in 2 Corinthians, uh, or in 1 Corinthians, where it talks about giving thanks in all circumstances. So Colossians 1. We're going to look at verses 12 to 14. One way to learn things is repetition. So that's what we're going to do a little bit here. We looked at the gift of salvation as being something that we should be thankful for, and that's what's being repeated in this passage as well. Colossians 1, verses 12 to 14. It says, Giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Most of all, we can always be thankful for what God has given to us. He's given us that gift of salvation. And this is another verse where it shows we should have that attitude of gratitude toward God because we are saved. God has saved us from the life of sin that we're in. I don't know if you could ever think back on a time where you were saved or rescued in some way. Uh, you know, Kristen and I had a bike trip one time where we were caught kind of out in the cold. Uh, we bit off a little bit more than we could chew as far as the distance we wanted to travel. And it was a really thick, heavy, kind of cold, wet rain uh, and snow. It was like this heavy snow at the same time. So we were kind of soaked to the skin and the temperature was floating about freezing. And it was, you know, we had like, I don't know, another five or six hours to go before we got to our destination that we wanted to go. And we were starting to feel pretty cold. We got a little bit of frostbite on our fingers, starting to kind of feel cold right down to the core. And this guy came along and picked us up. He rescued us. And that's what's happening to us as Christians, as people. We have all missed the mark, and we have all failed in some way or another, and God is there to save us. He's there to rescue us, to kind of pick us out of that cold and hypothermic place that we might be. And when we are Christians and we have accepted that gift, we can always be thankful for this. We are being saved to the point of being able to go to heaven. So what better reason to be thankful regardless of our circumstances that we're going in or that we're going through? Go ahead a couple of chapters to Colossians 3. This expands thankfulness uh, to other things as well, and it shows that it should be part of the garment that we put on as Christians, some of the qualities that we should have as Christians. And in, in the passage in Timothy that we looked at where it lists ungratefulness within all of those other qualities that we should not have or we should not desire to have, uh, having a, an attitude of gratitude or thankfulness is listed among other qualities that we know that we should have. So Colossians 3, uh, we'll look at verses 12 to 15. So Colossians 3, starting in verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, 
kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Kind of puts it at the end of this passage here, where it's showing that we should be thankful. And again, it's listed as part of our spiritual clothing with all of these other qualities. Uh, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, all of these things, forgiveness, all bound together with love. And it's one of those qualities that we should have. So we should always be thankful for that gift of salvation. And our thankfulness should also expand to the other blessings that we have been blessed with. It's something that you wear. It's something that other people will see, is that you are thankful for the circumstances that you're in and the things that you've been blessed with. And our attitude of thankfulness should be shown around the people around us. We go ahead one more chapter, Colossians 4. We'll look at verse 2. This is another area of our lives that we should be practicing regularly, and thankfulness should really be a part of it in that part of our lives as well. Colossians 4 and verse 2. Colossians 4 and verse 2. It says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. This is not the only verse where it shows that our prayers should have thankfulness in them. But it is something that should happen in our prayer life. We should be devoted to prayer. We should have that close relationship with God and close communion with God on a regular basis. And thankfulness should be a part of those prayers as well. Uh, oftentimes our first impulse is to ask God for things. Please help me with this, help me with that. And we definitely should be doing that. And the one thing we should also make sure that we include is being thankful as well. You know, ask for help and then also add thankfulness for the blessings he's blessed you with. There's benefits to being thankful, to having this attitude of gratitude in your lives. So why should we be thankful? Why would God want us to be thankful or be, have gratitude in our lives? Uh, one reason is that it is for our own good. It's good to thank uh, God and thank people uh, thank our circumstances for what we've been blessed with, but it also helps us as well. Uh, it's a lot easier to complain about everything not going your way. Uh, and again, it's it's one thing where I, I hear a lot where it's healthy to vent. It's healthy to kind of express your feelings in these ways. And I, and I agree with that. I think that's very true. But there is a difference to complaining where no reason and trying to determine the root cause of whatever your issues are. Uh, there's a difference between that and complaining for no purpose at all. Uh, if you're just going down that downward spiral of just seeing like, I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like this situation, I don't know why this is going wrong in my life, over and over and over again, and you're not really trying to find out what the root cause is to try to get out of that situation, that's just complaining for the sake of complaining, and that's not healthy at all. Uh, looking for a solution to your issues, discussing your problems with somebody that you're close to, something like that, discussing your problems in prayer, are ways that you can determine the root cause of whatever you're going through and try to get out of that. Again, when I'm going through my low time at Christmas time during the holiday season, it's something I really have to work on. I have to make sure that I don't get into that spiral of just being negative about my situation. I understand that there's a lot to be thankful for and you really have to go uh, through those very purposeful steps to look for what you're thankful for and stop that negative spiral of complaining within your own mind. It doesn't have to be something that you're verbally saying out loud, but it can just be in your own mind of just circulating those negative thoughts. And it's something that we really have to change and look for those things that we'd be thankful for. We go to Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Thankfulness is one key to uh, helping with those problems of being stressed out, anxiety, sadness. And Philippians 4, 6 and 7 really shows how this can work in our lives. So Philippians 4, starting in verse 6. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We probably all want less anxiety in our lives. And this is instruction in this passage to reduce and potentially remove a lot of anxiety. And the way that we can do this is pray to God and make sure that we include thankfulness in those prayers. Again, very similar to that other passage in Colossians chapter 4. When we're being thankful, we have to look for what we are thankful for. And that's what's being shown in this passage. Uh, 
with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So we ask God for help. We make sure that we ask him for those things that we, we need. We're asking for wisdom. We're asking for help. We're asking for healing. If somebody's sick, maybe you're sick. Asking for, you know, maybe this COVID situation in the world to improve. These are all really good things to pray for. And then you include in that thankfulness. You look for the positive in your life as well. And when we're doing that, we look for those good things. We're forced to search those things that are good and thankful for. And hopefully it can change our mindset around to looking for those positive things and not just continuing in that downward, downward spiral of kind of complaining and getting in that attitude of ingratitude that we shouldn't have. We start changing our focus to looking for the good instead of the bad. And again, it's something that we can do in our lives in all circumstances. If things are going well or if things are going not so well, we pray to God, we offer him or we ask for his help in those things that we need help with. And we also look for those ways that he has blessed us and we can be thankful for. When we do this, it's part of that formula uh, where we can obtain that peace of God, which transcends all understanding. So if we want this peace, if we want this peace in our lives where we can reduce this anxiety, we have to develop an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of thankfulness, being thankful in all circumstances. So how do we do this? Uh, we'll look at a couple of things and a couple of ways that we can hopefully change our mindset around in these situations. We go to Romans chapter 12. There is a method in scripture that, that uh, is touched on, and we've already touched on a few of these things or a few of these ideas. But it all really starts with trusting God, and that he has provided us with the ability to be thankful in all circumstances. Sometimes when you're feeling low, you don't see a way out. You think that this is going to be the way it is kind of for the rest of your life. You're never going to be out of this negative space that you're in. But we can trust in God and trust in what he's written in the scriptures that we can get out of these situations. We can do it. We can kind of get out of that low that we're in and kind of start rising up again. Romans 12 and verse 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. If we want to get out of these lows that we're in and develop that attitude of gratitude that we can all have and be thankful in all circumstances, it is a mindset change that we have to do. We have to change the way we think. And it's a very difficult thing to do depending on your situation. When things go bad, you complain, and that's normal. That's something that I think a lot of us can kind of understand, that we have to recognize things aren't going so well, and we start to acknowledge those things. But when you start complaining and you start going down that spiral of never looking for a positive thing out of that situation, that's where you're kind of in the pattern of this world. You haven't changed your mindset. You haven't renewed your mind to look to those positive things. And that's one thing that we can do. We can stop that negative spiral and start looking for those thankful things. And again, back in the Philippians passage where we pray, we put our requests to God, and we include thankfulness in that, it can hopefully start to kind of help us climb out of that hole that we might be in. And again, very difficult because that's all we really want to think about is those negative things sometimes. You have to force yourself. You have to look. What am I thankful for? What am I blessed with? Pray to God to help you get out of this low that you're in and thank him for the things that you've been blessed with. Uh, there's a good quote that I, I think I've said this in the past lessons, but I really like it. I think it's a really good quote. It says, you cannot prevent the birds of sadness from passing over your head but you can prevent them from making nests in your hair. We can choose not to dwell on these things uh, that are really bringing us down. We are going to experience them. Uh, these bad things in our lives or negative situations in our lives are going to happen. And we can choose to look at them, analyze them, dwell on them a little bit, and then try to get out of that place again. We can choose to do that. We can prevent those birds from making nests in our hair. We can do this. We can control these thoughts. We have to trust in God that we can do this. He's telling us that we can. We can give thanks in all circumstances, and we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. But we need to change the way we think sometimes. And again, it takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of willpower to do this, a lot of choice to really choose to think about those positive things. Make the effort to look for one thing. If it's difficult, look for that one thing in your life that you can be thankful for. Again, it could always be that gift of salvation. Look for something else. Once you get those things kind of going, you can hopefully become a little bit more easier and easier to see the blessings that you've been blessed with. And you can start kind of getting out of that low place that you might be in. 
We look at an Old Testament example in Daniel 6. Daniel 6. This is a really good example of expressing thanks in all situations. We can really learn from Daniel's example in this. Uh, Daniel 6, we're going to read verses 10 and 11. So the setting here is Daniel uh, is living in Babylon under, uh, under a king, King Darius. And they have uh, set out an edict saying that you cannot pray to any other person except for King Darius. If you pray to anybody else, we're going to put you in the lion's den. So Daniel 6, verses 10 and 11. It says, Now when Daniel learned that the, de the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So Daniel made giving thanks a part of his prayer life. And it's something that he did in the past, and they made this decree to say, you can't do this anymore, but he just kept on doing it. He knew that that was important. That's something he had to do. And if you kind of put yourself in his shoes and you think of what might happen in your life today, someone told you that if you prayed, you would be killed. You might have a reason to complain, to blame God uh, for your difficult circumstances. But Daniel still had this mindset of thankfulness. Even when facing a life-threatening crisis, he still gave thanks just as he always did. I think it's important in this passage where it says he still gave thanks. He was in a circumstance where people were going to kill him for being obedient to God, and he still was thankful for the things that he was blessed with. So again, when you're in a low period of your life and you feel like there's no way out, you can look back to the Old Testament to examples like Daniel to show how he still had the ability to give thanks. Uh, again, he, he might have been sorrowful. He might have been really stressed out. But I'm sure this helped where he was praying to God, asking for help and being thanks for giving thanks for the circumstances that he could look for and be blessed with. We go back to Philippians 4. We're going to close with this passage. We are to include this thanksgiving with every single prayer. I'd like to stress this again. A part of learning is repetition. And again, I'm, I'm talking to myself a lot in this lesson today. Make sure to remember to be thankful in everything that you do in all circumstances and most especially in your prayer life. Philippians 4 and verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Every time you pray for something, first thank God for something. Well, maybe it doesn't have to be first, but make sure it's included in there. Make sure that you look for something in your life to be thankful for. This is very practical instruction given to us in Scripture by God on how to get out of these situations that we're in that are really bringing us down. He's showing us that we have to count our blessings, the things that we do. You might think of the song that we sing sometimes in, in, in worship service, is count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it'll surprise you what the Lord hath done. It's something that's very true. If we make the effort to look for those things that we've been blessed with and be thankful for those things, it can hopefully get us out of those situations where we might start feeling low. And again, as we approach kind of a new year, as we're in a new year, we're in the second day right now, we can look with optimism in the new year. We can put these things to practice in our life. We can look back at the past year, and if it was rough, we can look at those things that we've been thankful for and have an attitude of gratitude into this new year. Maybe that can be your New Year's resolution this year, is to always look for those things that you're thankful for. Look for one thing a day that you're thankful for, and it can even be repeated. It's okay to say the same thing to be thankful for twice. Look for those things you're thankful for and think about them. Be purposeful in thinking about them and pray about them. When you do that, it can hopefully give you that uh, ability to be thankful in all circumstances that you're in. So after looking at the things, I know I feel a little bit better, and hopefully we can use these tools that God has provided to us to be thankful in our lives, understand what we've been blessed with, most especially that gift of salvation that we've been blessed with as Christians. And I'd like to offer that invitation to anybody who's watching right now. If you have not, a, not yet accepted Jesus on you as your Lord, so that you can always be thankful for that. We can show you in the scriptures how to accept that gift of salvation that he's offered to all people. And if you are a Christian who's struggling, um, you know, we can't stop those sad things from happening or those sad thoughts entering our minds sometimes. But we can choose not to dwell on them. We can choose to change what we're thinking about by choice. And if you're a Christian or if anybody who's struggling with changing that mindset right now and you need some help, again, please reach out and we'll help in any way that we can. So let's close in a word of prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us your Son and your Word, and most especially uh, this plan of salvation, this good news in the gospel that, that we have that we can always rely on, uh, no matter our circumstances, that whatever we're going through, uh, we can always remember that we can be thankful for this gift of salvation that you've provided to us. I pray that you can give us the strength and the mindset uh, to uh, always remember some things that we are thankful about. And I pray that we can be thankful for the things that we're blessed, about, uh, blessed with when things are going well with us. And if we are going through a time that we're struggling, that we can make the choice to look for the things that you've blessed us with so that we can be thankful for those things as well. Uh, I pray again that we can have the strength to do this as we come into this new year. And I pray that you can bless us in this new year and that we can uh, hopefully get through this uh, situation with the pandemic as quickly as possible, uh, that we can uh, kind of go back to the lives that we remember where we don't have as many restrictions. I pray that you can help us with that in the world uh, and that we can uh, be blessed in that way. And I thank you so much for giving us your son, for giving us your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Be safe, be well, and God bless.